In today's video, we're gonna look at tips, tricks, gear, and even some spots that I'm gonna show you guys where to go wade fishing. The coolest thing about wade fishing is it can be as simple as you want it to be or as complicated as you want it to be. But really all you need is a body of water, a vehicle to take you there, a rod, and a place to do it. Super simple. So you guys stay tuned. We're gonna cover everything I know about wade fishing and how I like to do it. What's up guys? Here we are with the brand new Murky Water Rod. This is my Murky Water Pro Team Rod for those of y'all who didn't know. Thankfully, I am on the Murky Water Pro Team and it has been awesome being able to use these really cool instruments, these really cool rods. See if we can't bust them out today. Doing a little wading, a little bit of wet wading, and it's a beautiful day out here. Beautiful day. There's some activity right over here. Let's see if we can't catch one right there. And I am in some shallow shallow water as you guys can tell we got some other dudes over there they're working a little deeper kind of at that color change so I'm gonna make my way out deeper see what we can catch There's one. Ooh, a little flounder. Cool. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well, there it goes. Cool, guys. A little baby flounder. <laughs> I didn't have a net, so that wasn't going to work out. A little baby flounder. So in this video, guys, I'm going to give you some spots that I like to go. Some spots on the PI side and some spots on the South Padre side. There's even a spot in uh, Port Mansfield that's pretty good for wade fishing. Um, I'm not blowing any secrets out of the water. A lot of people know that these spots are there. Um, so don't get mad at me for blowing your spot out of the water. It's just, it's pretty simple. You park there, there's water, you walk out. I don't know if y'all saw it on the camera, but he was about that long. Little tater skin, as we call him. And that's the first hit of the day, wow. Okay guys, so we're gonna start off with the gear that you need to get started with weight fishing. And the thing about weight fishing is it can be as simple as you want. You can go out there barefoot, which I don't recommend, a rod, some lures, and get going. First and foremost, you wanna be protected. So these are the boots I use. These are Everlast Raygar boots. I really like these. They haven't failed me. Hard bottom here and they also sell a, a ray guard that goes with it. So it's kind of like a combo. You got the ray guards, you got the boots. You can wear shorts or you can wear um, pants. If it gets a little cooler, I'd recommend some waders. You can go to uh, Academy and get some Magellan waders, or you can go Big Dog and get the Sims waders. So the other thing I like to wear with my boots is a good pair of neoprene socks. Uh, you can get these at Academy or any other sports store. You can always just wear thick socks if you want, but I feel like neoprene socks just are a little bit better and provide a little bit more support. So wade boots, ray guards if you want them, and neoprene socks. Been kind of slow for this first hour. It makes sense that the flounder's out here because it's a little muddier bottom. I'm just kind of working it slow, just tap, tap, reeling it down, tap, tap, letting it go down a salty head one fourth ounce I'm trying to work it slow this is the razor series with this uh mean tangerine by ams still rocking the murky water i decided to stop i was working back and forth i was throwing in front of me behind me i decided to stop and just head out deeper 
and then just cast out here for a little bit and see what happens. So one of the tips I want to give about weight fishing is try fan casting. And a lot of people, what they do is they walk on as far as they can go and then they just cast as far as they can cast and they're trying to reel it in and they just try one spot over and over and they're going to keep going until they catch something. Well, uh, what you could do, guys, is you could always walk the shoreline back and forth and fan cast. You can go to that deep water spot and you can cast as far as you want, you know, cast it towards a channel or something like that. That's fine. Um, but what I like to do is I, I like to look for grass on Google Maps and I like to find you know where those grass lines are. And, I'll, and usually there's fish in the grass because there's bait in the grass. So look for bait on top of the water, look for the grass on the bottom and um, fan cast. So whenever I say fan cast is if you come up to a spot, you're gonna cast 12 o'clock, you're gonna cast one o'clock, you're gonna cast two o'clock, and make your way back to 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and really cast around yourself. Um, and, and give yourself a chance, guys. Cover as much water as you can, and, and just walk around until you find something. If you find a bite, if you find a trout, chances are there's gonna be more trout there. Which is normally what I do, but I just wanted to change it up. There's like a there's like a grass line all the way down there. So I figured I'd work the grass line. It was low tide around eight. So I figured I'd work the grass line, maybe try to get some reds. Never fails, I always find myself back out here throwing deeper. All right, so moving on up, the next thing is uh, protection from the sun. So I like to wear uh, long sleeve uh, fishing shirts. If you guys have something like this, definitely recommend it. Uh, but something with a hood like this to protect you from the sun, uh, long sleeves. Um, also, you can wear um, a neck gaiter like that, protect your face. And I also like to wear uh, gloves too. So I usually like to have my whole body covered just because the sun is brutal and um, I'd rather cover my whole body um, than try my best to cover up with sunscreen. But if you don't have that, you can always uh, cover up with sunscreen. This is some good sunscreen. This is Sunbum uh, 50. You can go all the way up to 100 or whatever. Um, do it because the sun is absolutely brutal. And then of course a hat um, as well. Uh, by the way, I got some brand new Fishkin Milligan hats. If you guys want one, uh, let me know. I got shirts, I got hats. So you guys let me know and I will get you covered. And my shirts are UPF 30. So they will protect you from the sun. Head to toe protection. That reminds me of the next thing, glasses. Glasses are really good because they help your eyes protect you from the sun. But also uh, I recommend polarized glasses so that way you can see into the water life-changing guys seriously these glasses right here are hook and bullet um, i watched the speckled truth podcast and chris bush recommended these so these are the slick uh, lenses with the top shot frame uh, really like these glasses so um, can't recommend them enough i've had uh, a lot of good fishing days with them so anyways let's talk about the next part and that's the fishing stuff so let me talk about this setup a little bit first let me talk about the uh the reel this is a custom light from Luz, uh one of the best reels they have ever made in my opinion super lightweight carbon fiber handle really cool system i like how you can just adjust this i usually leave the tension knob right where it can jiggle a little bit and then i'll just work on this if i need less or more brakes super awesome i got it spooled up with uh suffix 832 this is 20 pound braid and i really like that bright green color guys man that looks nice with this murky water rod super solid i have it tied with an alberto knot to 20 pound um monofilament always 20 pound monofilament and then i got a quarter ounce salty head razor series with that am lures mean tangerine and it looks really good in the water. And then let's talk about the rod. So this is a 6.9 moderate fast murky water rod, custom made for me, Fishigon Milligon. We got ourselves a cork handle 
is kind of near and dear to my heart. It's kind of how I started fishing with cork handles. So I like how it's split, keeps the weight down, loving the green and orange. And I told him to go ahead and do uh, some bigger guides just because I really want that leader line to slide in and out. Really nice 6'9". I usually like less than seven foot when I'm wade fishing because if ever anything happens and I need to reach down and grab the tip and maybe get it undone or something like that, um, I can do that. So anything longer than seven foot, in my opinion, is no bueno for wade fishing. A lot of times people ask me, uh, what are you using as far as like rod and reel, uh, line, leader, uh, lures, hooks, um, and even uh, wade belts and things like that. So uh, I like to keep it really simple. Whenever I wade, I don't use a net. Uh, you can if you want to. I think that these, I think these are a little better than a net. Boga grip. I also recommend to have a floaty uh, with your boga grip. Uh, this was made for me by the guys over there at Stinky Pants, uh, which reminds me, if you guys want some Stinky Pants gear, you can use the code FISHIGAN and that will save you guys 10% on your order over there at Stinky Pants. I recommend them floaty, bogus for sure. Takes me to my next part. This is uh, this is the weight belt or one of the weight belts I use. I have I have a couple. Uh, one of the other weight belts I have that I don't have with me right now, and that is the Easy Weight Belt, and that actually has foam inside, and it's really cool because um, if you ever step in a hole or something like that, it's like you're already wearing a flotation device. So above the water line, if you ever like stepped off into a deep channel or something like that. This is a weight belt that you can get from Academy. This is the H2O Express brand. Uh, they're probably about 30 or $40. What I have attached to this is one of the things I have attached is this cord. And that is, that's how I keep the, the bogus um, attached with this cord here. This is a, a Landers cord. Forgot to mention on my weight belt, I also have some pliers. Also, I have this uh, quick release clip and um, I put my stringer in here. What you do is you just use this little quick clip and you just put your stringer in there like that. And then that way you're holding on to your stringer, your fish are floating away. Okay, so the next thing is a weight box. Um, I like uh, this weight box. I think it's a Flambo brand. Um, really any weight box will do. Uh, you can even make your own. Um, this is not a waterproof one, um, just because I've tried waterproof ones, guys, and they're not really that waterproof. So I'm like, why even try? <laughs> so if this gets wet, I just go and rinse it out. Whenever I'm waiting, I like to keep Keep it real simple. I like to keep some some bright colors and I like to keep some some dark colors. Um, a lot of times, you know, use your go to stuff that you know is going to catch. Uh, don't go out there with all of your trial and error stuff. I mean, pack light, pack small, but, you know, take some dark colors and then take some take some lighter colors maybe like a top water or two. I know that a bone top water is gonna do well, so a lot of times I'll take that out there, take some jig heads out there. I know for a fact that these um, little johns work really well, so I'll take some little johns out there. I'll take maybe like a spoon, some down sows, AM lures. If you go through all of this stuff in one weight trip, I don't know if I can help you, man, because most of the time I'm switching maybe, you know, four or five times and then you know i'm coming back so i mean four or five and, and this thing probably has like 40 lures in there and probably like 10 jig heads so um highly recommend salty head jig heads um am even has this little box that you can buy from their website like i said i like to keep it simple you could hop out of the boat with a rod and this box and you know a stringer and you'll be fine still works there's one. Oh, there's one There's a trout. There we go. There's a trout. Oh, <laughs> little baby red. Let's go. Finally. Little baby red. <laughs> Sweet. Look at that blue tail. Oh my gosh. Love it. Salty head, my guy. AM, atom atomic fire belly beautiful fish oh beautiful fish all right my guy see you later <laughs> you are golden so if you guys like what we're doing here at our channel this is fishing in milligan we like to wade fish we like to fish on a boat 
We like to fish on a kayak. We like to fish at the beach. I just like to fish, guys. So if you guys are down with that, go ahead and leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. And uh, let me know what kind of video you guys would like to see. And uh, let me know what kind of fishing that you guys do. Now these guys are running on the shallow water like Rocky and Apollo Creed. <laughs> Funny man. So when you're out here wade fishing guys, you don't need a ton of different colors. Keep it simple. Keep some lighter jig heads, maybe eighth ounce. Keep the heavier ones, the three sixteenths, the quarters. And then just keep some colors light and some colors dark. And that's pretty much it. You don't have to go crazy. Uh, you can go to uh, AM fishing check out one of these right here this is a cool little box from AM it's exactly why I like a shorter rod because it got tangled up at the end and with the shorter rod I can get that undone oh he's got one he's got one this guy over here has got a red I think his line is screaming I wonder if it's a bull red This is actually one of the very first AM lure colors I ever tried. So way back in, I think it was 2019 when I started the channel. I can't remember, but my first ever kayak video was in February and I used this lure. And if you guys want to take a trip down memory lane, go back and check out that video with the atomic fire belly. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. There's even a spot in uh, Port Mansfield that's pretty good for wade fishing. Um, I'm not blowing any secrets out of the water. A lot of people know that these spots are there. Um, so don't get mad at me for blowing your spot out of the water. It's just, it's pretty simple. You park there, there's water, you walk out. guys first little trout first little trout here on the three five the new wicked shank he's a slippery little fella He swallowed that deep too. A little trout, but we'll take him. Yeah, I know. Alright. Here we go. Alright guys, another one. On the purple, we got ourselves the wicked shank. Salty head and a little tiny AM and purple. Trout. This 
Got that good. There you go. Toxic root beer, buddy. The only bad thing about wade fishing is either the fish are there or they're not there. So um, a lot of times, either you wait it out or you just pack up and go to another spot. Um, but uh, the cool thing about weight fishing is that it's easy, but the bad thing about weight fishing is sometimes it can be hard. And uh, if they're not there, then they're not there, buddy. Because a lot of times what happens is the fish are in certain parts of the water. And if you're not in that part of the water where they're at, it's gonna be difficult. Um, but one of the spots I really like to go is uh, in Port Mansfield over there by the kayak launch. That's a great spot. You can park your truck. You can walk on out. Uh, pretty hard bottom, you know, a little bit muddy, but you know, not too bad. And just, you know, be smart. Walk out to where it's, you know, maybe belly deep or I wouldn't go past chest deep because it's going to be really hard doing this number. But usually between waist deep and, and belly deep and you know, you're going to be fine. You know, just kind of walk uh, the shoreline. Um, always shuffle your feet because you never know if there's stingrays there. Another spot I like to go to is in Port Isabel. Um, and when you're driving into Port Isabel, there's some trailer parks there on the side. Um, if you can find a place to park on the side of the road or somewhere there, um, behind those trailer parks and even further down towards uh, the high school is a good spot um, to park your truck. Don't get mad at me if you get towed. <laughs> I don't know exactly where you can or can't park, um, but just you know, be smart about it. Find a place to park, um, get out of your truck, walk down there, uh, take your stuff, um, pack light, uh, be smart. And then also the third spot that I like to go is on the South Padre side. And that's kind of right there by the causeway. So if you ever get over the causeway, right, right to the left or to the right, uh, you can park your truck and there's a little pier there. And basically you can just take that pier and you can just walk on down. Now there is a channel there, so be careful. If you see the markers, um, don't go down into the channel. Make sure you stay in the flat area. Really anywhere by there you can park and walk around on either side of the causeway. Just like I said, watch out for the channel because there is a channel there. Another place that people like to go is uh, behind the convention center. Uh, that water is really pretty. It's really clear. Um, sometimes there's reds there, sometimes there's not. Um, but I do know for a fact that there are alligators in that nature center, which is nearby the convention center. So. Please be careful guys, there are alligators. Yes, believe it or not, there are alligators down here in the lower Laguna Madre and they like salt water, fresh water, they don't care. So uh, please be careful right there. But uh, behind the convention center, you can go ahead and drive in on the, just behind the convention center, there's a road that goes left and you can see it. A lot of people park there and they uh, surf, they do the uh, kite surfing over there, but you can park there and you can walk on down. I've walked, way far down and um it's a hard bottom it's sandy bottom um i haven't done super good there but i know in the past people have so i'm putting that spot in there but really um those are spots that i like to do so there it is guys three spots that i like to weigh all the different gear that i like to use like i said this is just the way that i like to do it this isn't the right way or the wrong way it's just the way i like to do it the way i've had success if you guys like this video comment, subscribe. Uh, let me know how you guys do it. Uh, you know, where you guys like to wade, how you like to wade, uh, your go-to methods. Um, yeah, I'd love to hear from you. So thank you so much for tuning in. And remember, if you go out there and don't catch fish, it's all good. You can always fish again. Peace.